the devil run. I gave him poison just for fun. I had one friend, now there's none. Right? Can you see it? Yeah, I'm Peter. Peter. Yeah, come on. Where have you been, Pete? The Dolby and John Club? I went out to buy a pair of Dolby and that's how it's going to be great. I want to have a present. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got his coat on. Yeah, yeah. I knew your sister Karen, that's Didn't right, yeah. I and still do, I don't know yeah, Karen. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And then um, she said, come in and meet my brother. You was two boxes along, I Two think. boxes along, yeah. And uh, I said, oh, what do I want to meet him for? <laughs> I, I, I've got people here I know. I don't want to... And she said, oh, come along and meet Gary, you'll love him. You just like him. Yeah. Which was horrific when I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm just like him. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, we uh, we met, you had, you had a couple of white mugs in your box. Yeah, I, I did, yeah. They were trappy, weren't they? Yeah. City boys, yeah. large. And you ironed them out. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and then we, we, we just just cut off, really, yeah. off, really, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, very similar. And then for four or five years, we were we were mates. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, you even come Mauritius. We yeah, boys, come Mauritius, Mauritius, watch the World Cup, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the longest journey that ever went on, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. mate, it was blinding, though, because yeah. it was about... I guess about 40 of us. Yeah, it was, yeah. And uh, what we used to do, we used to leave the girls in Mauritius and fly off to the games in South Africa, the World Cup. Mm. And uh, Gary uh, was out there with, with a few of my pals yeah. and a few of your, people you know. Yeah. And uh, where we kind of cemented a, a relationship. Really? Yeah. Not, not in a relationship. Well, no, that's not, right. Not a relationship. A carer. Right? Carer. A friendship Cara. of a sort. Yeah. Right? And we become. Really good mates, good mates there. Yeah, um, and Peter, where did you how did you met up with Ray and, and in the first instance? Uh, through well, Carl, wasn't through it? Through Carl, yeah, yeah, we had a mutual friend. Carl Helm, yeah. Johnny. Looking, I, I don't Johnny. want to demean what they were doing, but they'd had a platoon they'd formed, <laughs> and they were looking for a head of intelligence. Something he didn't really need to be. He didn't really need to be that much yeah. better than the ones that were already in it. Yeah, so. we, we'd run out of money by then, so we could yeah. only get Peter. Yeah, so he had a head of intelligence was my title. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think I was always predicting things that, that and they mostly gone. came true. Didn't and they? mostly came true, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So, and then we got friendly from there. I'm on the sake, the wine, and everything, and that is not really conducive to any good uh, yeah. recovery periods. Pete, would you fancy that going out for lunch with him three weeks after you've had a oh, seven I'm, and a half I'm, hour I'm, operation? I was, was warned off in the hospital. Girl, how long ago was it when um, when you was first diagnosed? Twenty twenty four weeks. 2014, yeah, sorry. and it was, uh, yeah, I was 43. It's 2012, actually. I was 43. Um, moved from one job to another. Yeah. And again, uh, again, yeah. and uh, yeah, the medical um, to because going to the new job, and they, uh, and then the doctor rang me up. He says, "Listen, there's something a bit irregular about this. Um, we need you to have some more tests and everything." Um, had some more tests done, and then he said, uh, a couple of days later, he rang up. He said. You got prostate cancer, and I couldn't even tell you where that was. Couldn't even tell you where that you were. Hold on, you can't be that f stupid. <laughs> you must have well, heard of well, it. Yeah, but listen, before. at the time, it, at the time, it just uh, didn't really sink in, you know. And he says, "All right, okay, what's what's the uh, what's the move now? What have I got to do now?" Yeah. So go down and see him. You know what what you've got to do, what you ain't got to do. Here's the options, you do nothing, you keep it surveillance, you have this or you have the whole lot out. Well, you know, for me, there was only one one thing to do and that was have the whole lot out. Was that easy? Because, I mean, it's it, quite daunting, isn't nah, it? Nah, not really. I mean, it, it, was a, it was a, what, seven and I a half hours? I mean, the thinking about it. I don't mean the operation. Uh, I mean. Uh, listen, I, I didn't give them monkeys at the time thinking, you know, trying to be brave and all that sort of stuff. But it, it, once you get on your own and you're sitting there and you're thinking, God, you know, you've got a young, you've got young kids. They was what, ten and thirteen or ten and yeah. twelve at the yeah. time, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? You, you, what's happened if they ain't got it in time? What is, you know, what is this? What is that? And then yeah. it starts rattling round. You know, Kelly. You know, talk to her. She's, uh, she's, uh, you know, very says it how it is. You know, so it was a, bit, it was a bit of a, it was an awkward time, yeah. but. You know, I didn't mess about. I just went and got it done. You know, it was about two or three weeks after that, and I just went, "Bump, gotta get it out." And uh, and next thing I know, I'm in the Marsden and uh, having the operation. And uh, and then I think it was probably just about three weeks after that you, you took me out to lunch. 
<laughs> yeah, and you, I remember that because you, you weren't really allowed to have a drink, was you? Weren't allowed to have a drink, and we we wind up in Nobu, and I'm on the sake, the wine, and everything, and that is not really conducive to any good uh, mm. recovery periods. Pete, would you fancy that going out for lunch with him three weeks after you've had a oh, seven and a half I hour was, operation? I was, I was warned off in the hospital. It's, it's odd, isn't it, when you reflect on it, um, and and I suppose you think it's going to be more dramatic than it is, but. When a consultant opposite you says you've got cancer, mm. it's the word. It's the mm, word cancer. Absolutely. It sort of it knocks you, and then of course you you're sort of for a little period not really not really taking it in because they mm. then want to go on and explain what the options are, and yep. they're normally twofold, aren't they? They take it out, or they give you radiotherapy. The thing yep. that put me off about radiotherapy was when they say that if it comes back because they've weakened the structures there's not much they can do whereas if right. they whip it out you know yeah it's once gone. you've had the treatment once with radiotherapy you can't have it yeah again, that's what they you? said yeah yeah but it's just that that first bit is the worst bit in a way because it's not what you're expecting no. we're all pretty optimistic no. people aren't we so when yeah. you go when you go to see the consultant and you say you know what, what was the results of the test because like gary in my case, PSA test was high, passing a little bit of blood. Yep. Uh, you go there and you, you're sort of thinking they're going to say, I'll take two of these and you'll be, a, you'll be as right as ninepence. Yeah. And then in my, my case, it was like quite close to the outside, so it could have spread. So, so they did it. They did it quickly. And a mate of mine, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy the Key, he had, he had it a few years back. And, you know, he was diagnosed at the same time as another guy who he knew who passed away. But the difference was Jimmy got diagnosed early because he had tests. You have the a men are particularly test. bad at that, Ray, aren't they? We're not very Well, we good are at... because we don't talk about it. Mm. It's, yeah. it's to do with privacy and all stiff that. Stiff up a lip and I all that. I think it's isn't? getting better. Mm. I think we're getting a, a, a little... We're, we're, we're sitting in there talking about mm. it, so right. we're three, three kids out of London. Yeah. The way you thought it was through that bucket, I'm yeah. going to rub the wall down here, yeah. and I'm going to march onwards, you know. We even joked about... You, the big worry was having the cut about yeah. and not being able to use your old chap anymore. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? That I, mean, is that, 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 that. I think the thing that really ref I reflected on a lot is I've got a massive lot of cancer in my family. My mum's mum and dad died when she was 15, six months apart of mm. cancer. You know, um, my dad uh, had prostate cancer. My uncle died of prostate cancer. Yeah. So. Suddenly, you don't need the three lemons up on the machine to, 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 to work out. You're going to get it. So with two boys myself now, it's something that I've got to now look at, you know, later on in life for them, really, because yeah. it's, it's come out of the blue for me. Um, and that's why I enjoy working with the, the charity now and, and, and trying to get the message out there, because there's still, there's still so much that, you know, people don't know. I mean, only last week I've got people that I work with um, uh, who just ringing me up, look, can I talk? Because I've just been diagnosed with, with prostate cancer. This is what, the, you know, these are the options I've got. Same as what Peter's saying. It might have moved on slightly since since we've had it done. But um, I think a big part for me is, is the talking about it because there's still all the stigma yeah. around it. Yeah. No one wants to say nothing. I think, I think um, from my, my point of view, knowing you both, I mean, I'd, Peter had his problem, uh, but it was during the COVID thing. So we couldn't actually meet eye to eye and talk and get to know what he was going through. Mm. With you, it was different because I knew you for about four mm. or five years previous to that, mm. and I was quite. We were quite tight, you know. Mm. And mm. Uh, and watching you go through it and the face you put on, the brave face you mm. put on, I don't know what was going on inside because mm. you know, I don't think you'd allow yourself to be less than positive, you know. No, I think. And, and I think that the way you thought it was through that. It. I'm yeah. going to rub the wall down here yeah. and I'm going to march onwards, you know. We even joked about, because the big worry was having the cut about yeah. and not being able to use your old chap anymore. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? That, I mean, that, right. that, that was a big and, one. And, 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 and we used to have a gag about, are you going to have the pump put in? <laughs> It, it was, and it was, you know, but that is and the, there's a button. Yeah, there's but, a button. Press the ice cream. Are you going? Are you going to press the button? Or not? <laughs> and it, I didn't like, realise you had such a close relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a little group of us that still keep in touch to this day from Charlton and the old manager Alan Kerbishley always made this it's all it's all sort of good humoured but 
I always had this thing that because he didn't get all the Scott Parker oh. transfer money to spend, I must have it in my garden somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so when I actually went into hospital on the second day, this picture of a JCB <laughs> came through from Alan saying that while you're in, we're trying to find the money <laughs> in your back garden. And it's funny, a lot of people go, oh, that's not appropriate when you're very ill. No, stop it, but you, you know oh, what? It was those. Yeah. It was those sort of stories that actually, actually well, cheered me up. But that's close friends. When you know one another so well, mm. you can actually get away with murder with one another, can't you? You, you yeah. can. You got a bucket list? No. No. I take every. I got, got a bucket. I, I got a bucket. I take <laughs> it. Hole in it. I, yeah, hole in my bucket. <laughs> I take it. I listen. I take it day by day. Yeah. The continence part is is you know that is for me is the one thing that. I struggled with big time, you know, and, well, and you I, didn't have much of a love life before. No, though, but I mean, you? no, I'm, I'm talking about. Well, it's uh, the drink. Yeah. yeah, the drink, yeah. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's, that is one of the, the, the big side effects of it. You know, when you, you, as he says, you've got to wear a pad, you've got to, you know. And how long do you wear that? For? Well, I, really and truly, it, it depends how quickly it comes back and, you, and your strength and all that. Mine went on for two and a half years and I should have got it done. I had to have another operation. To to um, to what well, they put yeah, well to put yeah put it yeah they like want the you, to, they want you to strengthen the pelvic well, floor yourself with that? exercises. Yeah, well, Sorry, uh, that's yeah. <laughs> it's only not, we've got it to carry on for um, <laughs> I thought you had in one of the conkers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is. It's uh, you've got to strengthen your pelvic floor. It, it didn't right. come okay. back. But knowing you, you muscles. probably didn't do the exercises. Oh, I didn't do any exercises. No, oh, so I wanted no, and so. In the end, I wound up having to have another operation to, to, to do it. Uh, Is that know, like so strengthening the muscles? Yeah, that's like strengthening the muscles right. to stop yourself. And if you don't do that, I mean, it doesn't work. So then they put a mesh in yeah. um, to strengthen it up. So they, they, they make it well, tight. I'm doing it again. Here we go again. again. Oh, yeah. Barbara Wind, it's the Barbara Windsor scene again. <laughs> Going back to what Peter said, you know, you do, you do think about what people have said and you do reflect. And listen, I mean, you summarised everything, you know, getting me back at it after three weeks of, of having the operation, you know, and and, and that was a, a, your way of dealing with... Well, the, city, I, the city was going skin. Yeah. The pubs in the city <laughs> were going skin. I kept asking where you was. Yeah, yeah. so, but but no, I think, listen, it, it, it uh, certainly for me, it, it was a massive help getting through what I went through and all that sort of stuff by hearing, you know, people, to, you know, I think you rang me every day. I think, we're, you know, going right, uh, was obviously lining a few things up, but it was, it was, uh, I think that was, that was one of the biggest things for me when the people do rally round you and, 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 and tell you how, you know, how, how you doing and all that. The, you know, not everyone has the time to do that, but it obviously, you know, and it makes you feel proud that you've got people around you. To, yeah. to do that, you know. How did you feel when he reversed the charges? Though? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I was unemployed at the time. Yeah. So I had no oh, That's else a good reason as yeah, to why you would have. Yeah, yeah I mean, my phone was terrible. <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think it's right. <coughs> and, and, and as I say, when, listen, and, and I think we both could say this, uh, Ray, with, with what Peter's done and how he's doing things for us and us, you know, as a business now, it's like, mm. I mean, he's had, he's had plenty of ailments and, and, and you know, he's falling apart the seams at, at times. Oh, absolutely. But, but you know what, you know, nothing, you know, wavering support for what we're doing is, is, is amazing, so. Yeah. And top notch and all. Absolutely top notch. So uh, that's all the pleasantries out of the way. Now what I really want to <laughs> say. There might be people watching this who think, oh, I've had prostate cancer. Yeah. So almost like, oh, I've got to, everything's got to change now. Yeah. I've got to take it easy. But it hasn't. Maybe I would but it hasn't. Yeah. But it, but it hasn't. I think the message is it hasn't. You don't have to go into a shell and go, oh, I've been ill. Yeah. It's terrible, you know. Yeah. I don't know whether it will come back. You know, life's for living today, isn't it? So yeah. go out go out and achieve your dreams if you I want think to. I think you said earlier on, though, uh, uh, the word cancer mm. terrifies the life out of everyone. Doesn't awesome. matter who you are. Mm. And, and that word, the, the fact of the matter is at some point you're going to get touched by this. You know, someone in your family, even yourself. And I think the important message is it can be beaten mm. as long as you are tested early on. So you have a test once a year and you've got a major chance. Mm. You know, there's no, no need for you to end what you're doing just because of that. You can push on. Once you've had it done, get on with your life. And there's a million things out there you can go and do if you want to. Purely f through Gary, mm. what happened to Gary is, is that I, I have a full medical every year. You know, and just for me, it's for my family and all. That's right. Yeah. You know, my kids, because I want to see them grow mm. up. I want to see my grandchildren grow up. 
You know, and I, and I ain't finished yet. I've got a lot of things I want to do. You know, hopefully I'll get some of them done. Man, you got a bucket list? No, no. I take every. I got a bucket. I got a bucket. I take it. I, yeah, I'll yeah, hold in my bucket. I take it. I, listen, I take it day by day, yeah, hour it. by hour. If yeah. I'm gonna go and do something, I'm gonna do it. I'm, the, the, you know, nice to do's. Do I have the time to do? No, not really. But just listen. You, you, you can you can be gone in a, in a minute. So what, why plan for loads ahead? No, yeah. not for me. Yeah, life without each other would be a lot simpler. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I can only second that. Yeah. This badge, it does mean a lot to me, right? I wear it most of the time. Peter said it earlier. You know, when I travel overseas, I take the old clutch of them because when I, you know, when I work in America and all that, people are always fascinated by the badge. Fascinated. And, uh, you know, I, I see people. I mean, only the other day, I get out, I get a cab, the out, we was going somewhere, out here. I get dropped out here and the fella says to me, I like that badge, what's that? You start telling him, oh yeah, my dad died of that. Can I have your badge? The amount of badges I take off and, 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 and give to people. But I just think that signifies, you know, that what, what's the name? The man of men badge, man of men. You know, it, I mean, those few words there. You know, it, it means it means hell of a lot to me, and uh, and as I say, we're, people are fascinated by it. You know, and, and you're standing up for yourself. You you know, you've got that on there, and it, and as I say, I very rarely don't have it on when I'm you know wherever I'm sort of going. I always always wear it, and 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 you know, I can't give out enough of them. It cost me a few quid, but I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> but uh, don't you? I mean, you you was talking yeah, about I, that earlier on. I've got it on every suit jacket. I, yeah. I think it's more of a. I sort of regard it as a statement. Yeah. It's like uh, I got through it. Yeah. Mm. Which is like the message. If I do the guys bit, is always the same thing. You know, mm. don't think the worst. You yeah. know, you got to be. You have positive mindset. So to me, it just represents a sort of a statement. I got through it. Yeah. Um, and it is like Gary said. It becomes a talking point. You know, what is it? Where do you why? It? There's this football connection, because they see the managers wearing it all the time. Yeah. That sort of links into it. And you know, certainly in my case, the support from the football guys was was phenomenal you know right. they all sort of closed ranks and whatever and then you know they've done things themselves like Christy Powell yeah um, who works up here, you know he's a he's, he's a top guy yeah um, and and he was one of the ones who's very supportive at the time and and all of that it, it's all of that is embed, embedded in the in the logo it's got a bit of a memory in it as well if that doesn't sound stupid right you know when I'm wearing it yeah you sometimes look at it <coughs> and what happened to you that little journey of you've got cancer and it may be difficult and it may not, you know, we're going to have to operate quickly through all the journey is sort of encapsulated in that. Right. I don't, can't explain it that well, right. but it's sort of in there. That's my relationship between what happened right. and where I'm at now. Right. Does that make I think, sense? I think that summarises it very well. Which and is increasing the awareness. And it's, it's unusual for a badge to kind of take off like that. Mm. Yeah. Or an emblem to take off by that. And in a way, I suppose it'd be in, because I, I haven't had cancer, prostate cancer, I probably didn't feel I had the right to wear it, you know? And mm. got it the wrong way around, because it's not about whether you've had it or not, it's about supporting it yeah. and putting a message out there, in a way. And I'm just kind of realising that now, I guess. Well, there's one you know, thing that comes from the badge for me, Ray, yeah. and that is when people go, what is it? And you explain. You explain and right. I always follow it up with, do you know what? You should get a t Have you had a test? Yeah, no, right. You should get a test. Well, it's saving people's lives, isn't it? Correct. At the end of the day. Yeah, life without each other would be a lot simpler. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I, can, I can only second that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I listen, when you when you look at it, I think we've covered off a lot of, you know, what we're saying about that, you know. You, it's like when something's taken away. It's, you know, you take you take someone close to you away and, and you know, like as Peter alluded to earlier on, you know. You, you, you choose your friends. You choose your friends. You choose who your friends are. It's not like family. Family are there. They're your family and you love them dearly, you know. But to choose a friend is is down to you, you know. And so uh, when you lose a friend, I'm a very lucky boy. I've got a few close friends that I've known since the day I was born, more or less. You know, and if I lost one of them and I lost Gary or mm. even Peter now, you know, um, it would like leave an hole. Mm. It would leave a big hole. I mean, how many people buy this, this project mm. 
and through football mm. have actually been saved mm. by the message. Mm. Is that a wrap? Down the pub, lively! <laughs> <laughs>